which would is a crafting adventure set in a land of fairy tales. However, it might not be the game you're expecting, so I highly suggest that you fully watch this video to understand more. Hello, you gorgeous human being of the world. I'm Miss Bubbles, and if this is the first time you see me, I create weekly videos covering reviews, sales before you buys, and more. And even if we're keeping it bubbly, we don't tolerate no BS. So without further ado, let's answer the big question. Is Witchwood worth your bubbly cash? You play as this old witch who lives on the countryside in a very strange atmosphere and you wake up one day to the mess that a goat has created all over your house. So you chase down the goat and you learn that you actually have a contract with that goat which also happens to have something to do with a lady that is dead. Maybe your character and yourself as a player have no idea what is going on so you're just starting to do these different weird tasks for this weird goat. But the stories, man oh man, they are freaking good. As always, I won't go much into detail when it comes to the story since it's meant for you to explore at your own pace without me spoiling things for you. To keep track of the story, you have a journal so you can see the different chapters that you are doing and every chapter will represent a different character and the different tasks that you have to do for them. The game makes it easy enough to navigate between storylines so you can choose which one you want to track and you have a small reminder of what you need to do next and then a pointer which will show on your map so you can find your next objective. It's very simple to follow quest lines, you just have to be a little bit patient initially to unlock more and more portals and to see more of the map. Also I want to point out that the map is very important, like I really appreciate that the developers saw how complex the crafting system is so they made our lives a little bit easier by making the map simple to understand so your entire journey has a purpose rather than you playing for hours just to be bothered by the game that is really trying to piss you off rather than let you actually enjoy it. <laughs> so Witchwood focuses on a very complex crafting system and you have different spells as well as I think they're called reagents that you have to explore how to make and gather ingredients to create. Spells are usually more easy to make, they require a few ingredients here and there, however reagents are more complex and they might even require multiple spells as well. The entire premise of this game is for you to use your witch eye where at the press of a button you can scroll around around the screen and see what you can collect as well as spells, tools, or reagents that might be required to, let's say, capture a creature. There are plenty of tools for you to use. For example, you can use the logger's hatchet, which is kind of like an axe. You can use a, a net so you can catch bugs and stuff like that. So these let you acquire basic ingredients such as lazy grass, fireflies, clay, and shiny stone to name a few. There are plenty of ingredients together here. But there are other instances where you need to be more strategic. So let's say you want to get a meaty morse. You have to craft a snap trap and of course that requires ingredients that you have to find. Then you have to place it in front of a squirrel or a bird and then wait for them to take the bait. This all adds up to me telling you that some reagents are pretty grindy and difficult to get and I get it. You might be a little bit overwhelmed at first. Just give the game some time. Don't be scared scared to look around and read what the witch tells you to know how to get certain items. And of course, the more and more you play, the more NPCs you meet, the more you actually go ahead and search for ingredients, the easier it will be for you to know where you're going and what you need to get to progress your storyline. There's also a survival aspect here, which is very simple and easy for you to maintain. Basically, you have three hearts and you can easily replenish them by consuming a healing potion, which I have no idea how to pronounce so let's just skip through that and this definitely adds to the element of you being a bit on the edge because there are dangers around you for example bandits can harm you deadly mosquitoes are around as well as harmful dogs to name a few but as i said a simple potion or a craftable item can fix things and make your traversal much more simpler for example in one of the early quests in the game you need to get some of uh, like a dog's hair and to do that the dog is actually very aggressive so you go ahead and you craft a sleeping potion you give it to him and then you can cut a little bit of his hair and progress in your story now let's talk about the world the ambience and the sound now you are playing in a land of gothic fables and fairy tales and the art style mixes 2d and 
and 3D in a very lush environment. The characters are drawn in storybook art style, which is very charming, and it never ceased to amaze me every time I met a new character. You will also discover different portals that let you go from different area to the other, and these areas are pretty much very different from each other, and it just makes things always new and fresh for you to experience. For example, if you're going to the fields, they are very different than the swamp area and you can tell that the developers paid close attention to give each part its own love and art. And the colors? Oh my god, the colors. I love them and the game looks fantastic on the OLED. It's just wow. And the world does come with its own fair share of different puzzles so you can unlock different areas, but honestly, if I can do it, so can you. In the sound division, some things to note are... First, there's no voice acting, just mumbling and the use of dialogue and character portraits to reveal the narrative. As usual, this does not bother me one bit. In fact, the game is so beautiful, I was actually enjoying the sight of the avatars. And the dialogue has a mix of funny but also dark humor moments, which keeps you interested in what you'll do next. Second, the ambience is excellent. You can hear everything from the sound that your tools make, the process of making a potion, the wind, the birds, your footsteps. I actually recommend that you play this with a headset and there are some places where you want to slap yourself in the face. No, don't do it, I'm just joking, but <laughs> because the sounds of the mosquitoes around you are so annoying, you're like, uh, uh, let me, let me, pew, pew, you know, but uh, don't do that, no. <laughs> play safely, kids. And third, the music is beautiful to listen to. It is relaxing, enjoyable, and it puts you in the right mood based on where you are. I lowered the music just a bit to create the atmosphere that I want with a balance between music and the sound effects. And it's safe to say I really enjoyed my time exploring Witchwood with all of this package all together, coming together, together, together. It was awesome. Now, as much as it's very important for you to know that this game is heavily focused on a complex crafting system, you also need to know about the performance issues that are happening on the Nintendo Switch right now. Basically, I received the game code on the Nintendo Switch about a week before release date, but I decided to postpone my review. And this happened because the game was suffering quite a lot on the Nintendo Switch. There were very heavy stuttering issues and this gave me really bad motion sickness. I then contacted the publisher and they in turn got in touch with the developers and were told that there will be a fix on the day one of releasing the game and it's true with that the game did become a little bit better but it's still difficult to play it still stutters a lot and I had to talk to the publishers once again and they talked to the developers and there is another patch on the way to fix what's happening I think it's because of everything that's happening on the screen all at once there's a ton of different visual aspects happening happening, a ton of sounds going on, a ton of creatures just roaming around, so maybe that's why there's these different issues. So make sure to keep an eye on the pinned comment down below, I will let you know once it's better on the Nintendo Switch. As always, there has to be something rhyming in my video, otherwise it's not a Miss Bubbles video, right? So is this game worth your bubbly cash? We are going to divide this question into three parts. We're gonna say this game is for you if, this game is not for you if, and then there is my own opinion and verdict about the game. Now, this game is for you if you have the patience to immerse yourself in a bit of a grind and return for a beautiful story, amazing characters, and complex crafting mechanics. But this game is not for you if you are here thinking this is a farming RPG with dating mechanics and a very simplistic crafting menu. This was never mentioned in the marketing of the game, but I know these days a lot of people associate any game that looks like Witchwood to be more of a farming slash life sim genre kind of game. And now in my personal opinion, this game is a must buy. If you are like me, you're bored of the same old farming games, the same old life sim games, you're been, you've been playing playing the same kind of genre for a long while and you want to try something different, then I think Witchwood has something very valuable for you to experience. It is honestly truly charming, it's quirky, it has a weird dark sense of humor, it's entertaining and it can keep you playing for hours. The art style is gorgeous and it gave me nostalgia to when I used to read books as a kid of like Disney movies and stuff like that. However, keep in mind again that the performance can definitely be better and I'm hoping that it will be with the new patches. And of course, if these performance issues are a deal breaker for you and you don't care about bed gaming sessions, you don't care about handheld gaming sessions, then you can buy this game on other consoles and still enjoy it for what it is.
And because the game can be a little bit overwhelming, I will do something different on this channel. I'm gonna share with you a few tips that can help you get started with Witchwood. First of all, play at your own pace, take it easy and have fun. There's no rush, there are no timed quests, just take it easy and relax. Second, the map is your best friend. As I said, you can find the objectives that you are looking for on the map, so make sure that you are using it. Also, make sure to use the portals. You don't have to use the map to go from area to area. You can go to the portal hub and then choose which area you wanna go to. Another thing is collect anything you see, the more the merrier. You never know when you're gonna need them and everything requires a lot of ingredients so it's never a bad idea to have a few on the side another thing is for you to observe around you use the damn which skills that you have use the eye sense that you are given and that way you can know if you can pick up something if you need a different tool to pick up something the weaknesses of enemies and so on i'm someone who's always obsessing over saves but all you have to do is go to the main menu quit the game and then the next time you load your game you'll be right where you left off don't forget to let me know in the comment section if Witchwood is worth your bubbly cash and do me a favor of squishing the like button to give the video a boost if you enjoyed it. Thank you to my patrons for going out of your way to support the channel and a shout out to fantasy dreamer Justin and Faith for going the extra mile. As always, stay bubbly, stay positive, and I will see your gorgeous self in the next one. Bye!